Welcome to Usability in Human Factors Designing for Safety. This is Lecture C. By the end of this final lecture, students will be able to 1. Identify common sources of error documented in research studies in medicine. 2. Apply principles underlying the design of healthcare systems for safety. 3. Design a workflow analysis study. Medical error reporting has been suggested as a method of allowing us to study and decrease errors. This could include the taxonomy described in the previous lecture, B. Current reporting systems are often specific to the domain and task. Reporting systems should allow identification of problems as well as solutions. Ross Kopel is a sociologist who studies hospital work. Computerized Physician Order Entry, CPOE, was identified by users in one of his studies as a major source of errors, some of which were very bad and most of which were easily fixable but not fixed. He examined the sociological causes of errors. He stated that vendors want to sell early since investment makes it less likely that hospitals will switch systems later. This gives less incentive to be responsive or to make changes according to feedback. Koppel also states that hospital administrations want to validate their investments, giving them little incentive to discuss errors. Contracts may prohibit open discussion. However, Koppel states that it is in fact a JCAHO requirement that hospitals are prohibited from avoiding discussion on health information technology, HIT, related patient safety. It is also impossible to tell exactly how a system will work in situ until deployment due to the complexity of healthcare contexts. Examples of interface created errors are allergies were impossible to enter or when one is entered it erases the previous allergy. So if the first allergy is anaphylactic shock, a very serious, potentially life-threatening reaction, and the second is a mild rash allergy to latex, the anaphylaxis alert disappears. Vendor contracts prohibiting communication about their products means vendors may be in control of information and vendors choose which flaws to remedy. Realistic testing scenarios are rarely used but should be standard. Barcode medication administration BCMA systems are intended to ensure the five rights of medication administration, the right patient, right drug, at the right dose, at the right time, via the right route. His study of workarounds to these systems was done with observation interviews, failure analysis, and log file data at five hospitals. He found that systems were overridden for 4.2% of patients and 10.3% of medications. This has the possible consequences of wrong drug administration, doses, times, and formulations. Thus, there is a need for attention to use of these systems as it is done in the hospital to ensure safety. Koppel's studies show that around one-third of medication errors occur at the administration stage in adults. Barcode systems integrate a Medication Administration Record MAR, with administrative processes, ensuring protocols are followed. However, in observational studies, he found that staff uses workarounds, omitting process steps such as visually checking the medication list, name, and dose. Sometimes, a workaround involves carrying out the steps out of sequence, such as documenting before administration instead of after. Other workarounds included using unauthorized BCMA barcode medication administration steps, such as placing the barcode on another object, not the patient, and scanning it, overriding alerts because of smudged or torn medication labels, missing wristbands, and the like was another problem. Causes of workarounds can be technology related, including software and hardware problems. Probable causes of workarounds include task-related reasons such as the user being unfamiliar with the correct protocols or thinking that using them would slow performance. An example of this is carrying several patients' medications on one tray. 
Organizational policies can be incompatible with safety, leading to workarounds. Examples of these can be pharmacies sending partial doses, codes being covered by a required label, and so on. There can be patient-related causes of workarounds, such as patient refusal to take drug, vomiting, sleeping, agitated patients, patients in contact isolation or with central lines, or patients using homebot medications, which may not have barcodes. Environmental causes of workaround can be such things as a lack of wireless BCMA, room or doorway configurations which hinder bedside BCMA access, medications stored far from the scanner, for example, in a refrigerator, which requires extra trips, loud noises in the environment could prevent the user from hearing alarms. The key to impact from workarounds is the many relationships and causes, each of which can cause many workarounds. Most of these are due to time-saving efforts by staff, which can be a response to staffing inadequacy. Study of the complete system design, workflow, technology integration, and improvements in integration is best to analyze the situation. The aim should be to make it easier for staff to follow correct procedures and harder to work around in a non-productive way. These principles and finding are not obscure, but are often not followed. Koppel's JAMA 2005 paper on how CPOE could facilitate errors was widely discussed. It concerned an older system at a tertiary care hospital. He found it could facilitate 22 types of medication error risks. The reasons included fragmented displays, misinterpretations, function separation, incompatible orders, and inflexible order formats, which led to wrong orders. He interviewed 90% of the staff. 75% of house staff reported observing these types of error risks weekly. Walker and colleagues devised an interim pragmatic framework for fostering electronic health record, EHR, safety, and studied using EHRs as a tool for process improvement. This requires new organizational policies, job descriptions, education, and work systems. Safety must be explicitly recognized as the goal. Walker also advocates reporting to a national clearinghouse and making all the anonymized data available for viewing. Vendors, likewise, would be required to report and there would be rapid notification to multiple stakeholders when important flaws were identified. The SAFER guides are designed to help healthcare organizations conduct self-assessments to optimize the safety and safe use of electronic health records, EHRs. The SAFER guides were developed based on the best evidence available, including a literature review, expert opinion, and field testing at a wide range of healthcare organizations, from small ambulatory practices to large health systems. There are nine SAFER guides. Each one begins with a checklist of recommended practices. The nine cover clinician communication, contingency planning, computerized provider order entry and clinical decision support, high priorities, organizational responsibility, patient identification, system configuration, system interfaces, and test result review and follow-up. ECRI Institute strongly encourages healthcare providers, patients, and manufacturers to report medical device-related incidents and deficiencies to our free, voluntary, and confidential problem reporting network. When we determine that specific device hazards may exist, we inform the manufacturers and encourage them to correct the problem. 
we publish the resulting safety information in health devices alerts for our members and occasionally in special notices for the public. Mandatory reporters, i.e. manufacturers, device user facilities, and importers are required to submit certain types of reports for adverse events and product problems to the FDA about medical devices. In addition, the FDA also encourages healthcare professionals, patients, caregivers, and consumers to submit voluntary reports about serious adverse events that may be associated with a medical device, as well as use errors, product quality issues, and therapeutic failures. These reports, along with data from other sources, can provide critical information that helps improve patient safety. The FDA encourages healthcare professionals, patients, caregivers, and consumers to submit voluntary reports of significant adverse events or product problems with medical products to MedWatch, the FDA's Safety Information and Adverse Event Reporting Program, or through the MedWatcher mobile app. The United States Food and Drug Administration's Manufacturer and User Facility Device Experience, or MOD database, can be searched for reported problems. Note that EHR-related problems will not be found by searching for Electronic Health Record, or EHR, but instead under Medical Computers and Software. Recommended management strategies for discovery of flaws include local implementation teams notifying the EHR vendor who should provide a software fix. If the vendor does not, the organization can change processes or policy. If this is not possible, the relevant function should be removed from the EHR. If this is not possible, users must be warned during training and repeatedly thereafter in practice. Organizations must track mitigation efforts and incidents. Other methods of error prevention include the use of two teams. One, the shadow trainers, observe users, answer questions, are easily available, provide just-in-time education, report flaws, to the 24-hour command center. The command center makes rapid fixes as flaws are discovered. The second team consists of clinical operations leaders, EHR support, informaticians, IT security, patient safety, and risk management personnel, and public relations. This team must be able to meet on few hours notice to make corrections, warn users, and remove flaws from the system if possible. Vendors can provide incident management for smaller organizations along these lines. Canada Health InfoWay is one of the major health IT projects in Canada. Their patient safety pyramid has at the base stakeholder consensus, then technical standardization, research and evaluation, which inform development, realistic goal setting, and then advocacy. InfoWay identified lack of knowledge as a major problem. Large-scale studies of EHR effects and safety have not been done due to lack of concept and technology standardization. Reports of incidents are largely anecdotal and often confidential. There is a lack of pre- and post-deployment measurement and, in Canada, jurisdictional differences. Design patterns are an approach used in architecture and software development. It consists of identifying common problems or situations which fall into patterns 
and then devising a solution which addresses the problem but can be reused in other similar situations. When there is a library of design patterns, work can be reused, which makes it easier to respond rapidly to emergent flaws. Another proposal is to have dedicated HIT labs attached to hospitals and invite the participation of a broad base of end users, such as by using web distribution and participation. Voting via the web for solutions which make sense for different work contexts would be a way to rapidly acquire knowledge about customizations that must occur. Simulation and gaming are used in other fields to hone skills and discover flaws. The same might be used in safety training and design. This might require providing sandboxes for users to practice their skills and become familiar with software quirks before going live and thereafter. Permitting free discussion of flaws and discoveries among users would assist in both training and software fixes. There are many examples of bad design. This slide describes a problem with VA medical data in which data sometimes popped up under another patient's name. Other examples include failure to clearly display stop orders leading to unnecessary drug doses and a fatality after an untrained doctor pushed the wrong button. Multiple name formats as shown here are just one of the design issues that must be addressed carefully. Drug names with their common stems and varying suffixes are another. Because of the similarity in names and the fact that in alphabetized pick lists they will appear together, increasing the risk of wrong drug being selected. They may be capitalized for the parts that vary to make clear distinctions. As of yet, EHRs are not considered medical devices subject to the Food Drug Administration regulation, but this is being examined by the FDA. Current Office of National Coordinators regulations mandate functionality, but not comprehensive safety standards. According to the National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare, safety in healthcare is a hot button topic today and with good reason. One of the major advantages of electronic health records is their potential to increase patient safety by preventing, detecting, and aiding in the recovery from human errors. In order to turn that potential into reality, the Office of the National Coordinator has set Certification Standards for Safety Enhanced Design, SED, making patient safety a primary focus in the design of an EHR. Certification requires that designers follow two major steps. Use a formal user-centered design, UCD, process during development perform summative usability testing on specific areas of the product. User-centered design, UCD, procedures have been specified in detail in several ISO standards listed below. These are not the only acceptable standards, but the point is that a formal UCD procedure must be followed during design and development, and the procedure must be identified or described as part of the certification process. Developers should familiarize themselves with required government standards related to SED, and vendors will be expected to specify the standards used in the design process of their EHR system. The standards include ISO 9241-11, ISO 
9241-210 ISO TR 16982 IEC ISO 6236 ISO IEC 25062 NISTR 7741 and 7742 NCCD states that the second step summative usability testing is described in detail in the ONC document test procedure for 170.314 G3 safety enhanced design. In addition, ONC provides a handy elaborate template NISTIR 7742 customized common industry format template for EHR usability testing for summative testing. The NCCD considers NISTIR 7742 extremely useful, if not essential, in seeking certification. The NCCD provides use case scenarios and testing methods for safety enhanced design on its website. In the test procedure, real users run the EHR with a series of fundamental tasks. The goal is to measure the usability and safety of the EHR by documenting, one, its effectiveness in performing each task, two, its efficacy in performing that task, and three, the user's satisfaction from performing the task. Each task is a fundamental EHR capability and each must be tested and reported separately. The tasks cover these capabilities, areas of focus. Computerized Provider Order Entry System, CPOE. Drug-Drug, Drug Allergy Interaction Checks. Medication List, Medication Allergy List. Clinical Decision Support. Electronic Medication Administration Record electronic prescribing, clinical information reconciliation. The National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare has developed a set of design guidelines or briefs that are intended for anyone who develops and implements health IT applications, particularly for electronic health records, EHRs, who want to learn more about human factors and design. These briefs were written for the community of people who are working to make healthcare better by improving the state of electronic health records, EHR development teams, other health IT app developers, usability practitioners, insiders or consultants, or EHR client implementation teams. The briefs are located at references provided in the end. The National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare suggests starting with the general design briefs on the left for recommendations that apply throughout all areas of EHR development. Next, select briefs specific to the meaningful use area that you are interested in. The briefs focus on high-impact, actionable, evidence-based recommendations for improving safety-enhanced design. The briefs use ample visual examples based on solid science of human factors engineering, cognitive science, learning technology, and data visualization. The briefs also use plain language to make this easy to read but provides links to more in-depth content for those who wish to learn more. On the next few slides, we will look at the general brief on the effective use of color. Carefully used colors can dramatically improve the efficiency and safety of health information systems 
by drawing attention to important items and making it easier to perceive differences and trends. On the other hand, incorrectly used colors can make a display hard to use, hard to interpret, and misleading. To maximize the communication benefits of color design, use grayscale, then add color sparingly. To group items into different categories, use no more than seven colors, four recommended. To show sequential ranges of quantitative values, use one color for sequential and two colors for diverging values. Vary color intensity from pale, low values, to darker, extreme values. To ensure consistency, learnability, and to prevent misinterpretation, create rules for colors for critical values, colors for severity of warnings and alerts, colors for different categories of items, colors combined with differentiators, tooltips, symbols, icons, positions. To ease understanding and learnability of colors, use texts, tooltips, or legend. Use colorblind friendly colors. 10% of men and 5% of women are colorblind. Combine color with an image, shape, position, or text to convey the same meaning. To select appropriate color schemes, use tools that match schemes to data types and support colorblind, safe choices. Use tools that preview design as it would be seen by a colorblind user. This concludes Lecture C of Usability and Human Factors Designing for Safety. Designing for safety in healthcare IT is a difficult, ongoing, and rapidly changing process in which research and careful planning are required.